gentlemen. And, you know, I have to be honest, we did not expect to see TDK do as well as they did with this sub roster here at the beginning of the game. We saw some great pressure bot lane in securing that kill against Piglet and Expecial, as well as a lot of LCS <laughs> big plays being called out for <laughs> Bishu in the mid lane at Hero X Stunner rights. That Bishu play earlier in mid was amazing, you know, baiting the ultimate too. So we're going to roll that clip for you guys right now. 71%. Oh, what a nice Emperor's Divide! One last hit! Bishu says thank you very much. TDK have Alex Siege, now Bishu, all these mid lane substitutes always working out just in range for the knockup. Knocks him back right away. Nice little outplay there. Phoenix did follow a bit too closely, but a nice capitalization there by Bishu. Uh, also really nervous when, you're, when you make a play like that and he burns his flash. Probably could have gotten away with it with just turning his back, but really, really great outplay. Yeah, so essentially, you know, it's nice to have seen these guys come in, you know, as a sub squad and have the confidence to make plays like this. That's what you want to see when you only have limited number of games on this land stage is really come out, make a name for yourself, put pressure on the other team. And we saw kind of take, you know, Team Liquid off guard and put them a little off kilter for a good portion of this game before they're able to wrestle control out of them. Yeah, it's kind of what Jat likes to say, where they're playing with house money at that point, right? They... They're like, all right, we're playing in the LCS. We're getting this experience. Let's go hard. Last time CLG had a sub squad, I think they got first blood every game they played in, <laughs> right? Because they're just going hard. They're making these early plays. And then when they get out strategized later on in the game, that's the problem that they run into. So they're getting these early game leads. And it's good to see that, right? I, I'm glad that Bishu was able to do that and not play passively. But Kez, the guy who is on TDK as a permanent resident, is making more early game moves than we saw when he was on complexity. He wasn't just like, all right, 80 minutes, the dream. We're going to go and gank bottom. We're going to apply pressure to this map, and we're going to start getting the game snowballing in our favor. It didn't work out later on because top lane got out of control, but... <laughs> It's good to see that from him. Well, and that's where I do want to look next is the longer standing members of TDK in Seraph and Kez. You've already brought up Kez and his ability to shot call around the map. Have presence in all of the lanes. Unfortunately, Nar did pick up three early kills. So yeah. when he did show up top lane, it was to no avail. But I think that is a good sign for them that one of their big veterans in Kez is already, even with you know his not normal roster behind him, really moving around the map. Yeah, there are so many options open for Kez in this game because he has two solo lanes that are very evenly matched. These are skill matchups, both Nar versus Rumble and um, Phoenix, Azir versus, Azir Cassio. versus yeah. Cassio. And then he's got this bottom lane where they're playing very aggressively. You know, Piglet's very, very far up in the lane and he wanted to punish that as well. So, so many choices. He was able to make one of them work. Uh, but as you said, not once Nar gets out of hand, that is the one champion on Team Liquid, the main champion that's going to crush you because they do have so much magic damage. I was just yeah. say, when you look at the itemization there, the amount of magic resist that came in for Quas was absolutely ridiculous. Allowed him to tank up ridiculously in fights. Yeah, after he got those three kills, he had the Hex Drinker on top of the uh, uh, Spectre's Cowl, and that was enough magic resist for him to survive everybody on the team. And he got Ninja Tabi because the only physical damage he's going to be taking is Corky auto attacks for the most part. Everything else he does is pretty much magic and just stack that resistance. So that was a compositional error by TDK. It's such a great feeling when you can build for your lane phase and it's the same thing that you yeah. need to build <laughs> yeah, for the exactly. gameplay. You're like, just like, oh, I don't even have to make any choices here. Yeah. Right. Just there's there's one decision tree, just one long decision tree. Let's take a moment to hop into our replay. We're going to go 27 minutes into the game. Kobe, I'm going to let you take this one away. Ends up being a 4 for 0 for Team Liquid. This is kind of where the game blew open. Yeah, this is the team fight that made the game. Uh, well, we're going to pull it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there. The, the teams right now are actually extremely close. Very, very close in gold. Uh, so let's roll through the clip here and we'll see this is the dragon fight that decides the entire game. All right, so stacking up the Rand, you know that Kalista is probably going to get it. The hook onto Quas. This is the perfect team fight for Team Liquid. His Narbar is already charged up. You're basically pulling him in exactly where he wants to be anyway. And then they followed up so well with Dominate with his Gragas ultimate right into Phoenix as well with the Kalista ultimate. Perfect execution after they were set up so nicely to get that giant Nar ultimate. After that, it's very easy for them to just finish out the team fight. And Liquid kept their threats in different positions, so the Rumble ulti only goes across Piglet, and Phoenix can do whatever he wants on the side. It was really well played, just positionally and in execution. Right, the layering of the CC there, Annie into Nar into Cassio ult. 
I mean, from there, it did seem like just kind of another day at the office for Team Liquid once they finally had their legs underneath them. Well, when you win that fight, you get Dragon, you get Baron, and then they use the Baron to get... Three turrets. Four, three, yeah, four, three yeah, turrets. Yeah, all the outers. That's a pretty big swing. Exactly. So, anyway, well played for Team Liquid. They do start off with a win, as much as it was probably expected for them. We are going to step away for just a moment, but when we come back, we'll check in on the conversation taking place on Twitter. So, for any of you procrastinators out there, hurry up and get those answers in. After that, it's back onto the Rift for Counter Logic Gaming versus Team Dignitas. So stay with us. All right, no one expects us to win today, but we can definitely win. So let's Yay. do this. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Easy. Easy wins, boys. Easy. 71%. Oh, what a nice Emperor's Divide! One last hit! On the back, on the back, 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 back. Okay, back, come back. All right, we can go hard here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat flash. I'm gonna eat flash. Is this we, can, we can, we can, we can ban here. Ban, 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 That's gonna be one, two, three, possibly a fourth here coming in, looking for the penta kill for Kaylin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gonna find Lab Man. Cast your flash, cast your flash, and cast your flash. Kill Cassio. So this is right there. We should peel back, peel back. Okay. Hit the front line, hit the front line. I'm out, I'm out. Okay, 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 okay. Back off, back off. Back, back, back. Back corner. Plus that's no flash. And no flash. Nice, nice, nice. Team Liquid takes down Team Dragon Knights for their first win.